Hey guys, as many of you know, I was among the 100 lucky people selected to travel to Munich recently for the Rennsport Summit, which was the premier event of a racing sim that's scheduled to be released next year. So I was able to see the sim, talk to the people behind it, and even get some hands-on time with the new title. So I'm going to use this video to share my five biggest takeaways plus one bonus takeaway. Let's get into it. What's going on guys? It's Mike for Sim Racing 604. And as mentioned, I traveled halfway around the world to Munich to try out Rennsport. And so I'm gonna use this opportunity to share my impressions of the title so far. And after five days of learning about and testing the title, uh, there's five things I wanna share with you guys to give you a better impression of what to expect when this is released to the public in 2023. And the first thing I wanna mention is that this event was refreshingly transparent. It was amazing how much they were willing to put themselves out there. And the first example, I I want to show you is that and this is not being talked about enough esports pros outnumbered content creators and influencers media people like myself by about four to one so this was really more of a stress test of the title in its current form rather than a press event and i know there's a stigma that surrounds content creators that will say anything just to get more free stuff so even if you don't believe us even if you believe that stigma is true just know that a hundred of the or roughly 70 or 80 actually of the top one percent of the top one percent of sim racers who as we know are not shy about sharing opinions about racing sims and their shortcomings were there to test things out so there's going to be a lot of opinions floating around and uh, it was quite a way to test the new sim and i was thinking about this transparency in context if i was to spend two years making a video i definitely would not premiere it to 70 or 80 filmmakers and 20 or 30 film critics that's remarkably brave of them and i even had the chance to speak to the lead programmer and ceo after the event and they were very nervous going in because they weren't sure what sort of the best minds, meaning these esports pros, were going to think of the sim, but they were all very relieved and happy at the end of it. So that transparency was just remarkable. And on top of that, there was no real embargo or NDA to speak of, which was surprising to a lot of us. Normally at this st early stage of development, they wouldn't want too much to get out there, um, but they really didn't hold anything back from us. They just told us not to share any gameplay before June 1st. Other than that, we were free to talk about whatever we wanted to talk about, share pictures of whatever we wanted to. And now that the embargo was lifted, we were uh, allowed to share the gameplay footage and that's pretty incredible. And then also on the third day of the event, they held an open Q&A. So we sat down with the lead programmer, with the CEO as a group. And again, those 70 or 80 esports pros, plus a bunch of us on sort of the media side, were allowed to ask whatever we wanted. Nothing was off limits. Uh, there was things they couldn't confirm, of course, at this early stage of development, but they were very candid. They were very open and goes back to that transparency. And the last point on transparency is that the more of the public is now able to try it. They've taken a couple of sim rigs on the road to different events. I think right now they're in Germany. And so they're just bringing containers. They'll open them up at the event and the public can go in and try early versions of Rennsport. So just really surprising and impressive levels of transparency for being this early in development. And the second point I want to talk about is game features. So this sim really seems to check a lot of the boxes that we as sim racers look for. This isn't some exclusive hyper-focused esports based title. Uh, a lot of the features we look for broadly in sim racing seem to be present or are in the works. It's far too early to make firm statements about a lot of things around this title, um, but in general, the things that are in the works, the things that the lead programmer was talking about, he was implementing over the next roughly 18 months of development uh, look very promising. So for example, many people wanted to ask about VR. Is there going to be VR support in the title? Uh, yes, they're working on it. Triple support? Yes, they're working on it. Is it going to be a GT3 only sim? No, they're going to open it up to different classes. In fact, there was another class, like a track day, all electric car uh, that we got to drive at the event as well. And in terms of night driving and weather variability, the good news is it'll be fully dynamic. That's still in the very early stages, but they are working on it. And also you probably have seen at this event that uh, they sort of uh, set things up with very high end rigs. It was direct drive wheels and load cell pedals, but there's also going to be support for gear and belt driven wheels. So it's good to know that they'll support a wide range of hardware. 
And also, the way they did the event was they held basically tournaments. First was Hot Lap, and then uh, they got everyone uh, to do sort of a round-robin tournament all on the track at the same time, and they were broadcasting it on the big screen overhead. And the broadcast tools look really great, and also worth noting that the multiplayer experience seems solid. Granted, the server was local, so your ping is effectively zero, uh, but for what it's worth, what we saw, uh, the game performance was excellent, even with 10 cars on the track, and I don't know much about the PC specs that were running it, uh, but the frame rates were comfortably into the three figures, so everything seems in line in terms of the game performance and multiplayer performance. Again, that will change once the once you're talking about remote servers, but for what we saw, it was very stable and uh, you know seemed to perform extremely well. In terms of mod support, it's still unknown at this time what that's going to look like. I know a lot of people thought this was going to be, including myself by the way, thought this could be an NFT scam. A few of us who were attending were messaging messaging each other before we actually got to the event and saying, you know, are we going to sit through a three-day presentation of NFTs? And the answer is no. Uh, one of the first things the CEO Morris made clear was this was not an effing NFT game. So uh, still unclear. It's one of the aspects that they are still playing quite close to the chest in terms of what the uh, final content will look like or what the mod support will look like. Uh, but definitely it's on the table. They are discussing it. And I, I think it's going to be something they look at implementing in one fashion or another. So I would say in terms of features, uh, it seems like Wrenchport is going to line up nicely within the uh, sim racing community, gives, giving us a lot of features uh, that we look for in titles. So that's good. I mean, it's too early to say what the final content roster will look like or if the VR integration and VR performance is going to be seamless. It's way too early to say that. Uh, but for now, we can say that it seems like their priorities are in the right place in terms of listening to the community and giving us some of the more commonly requested features. So fingers crossed that all that implementation goes well and we have the feature rich title that it's shaping up to be when it's launched to the public probably by the end of 2023. And of course, nothing I've said in this video so far matters if the game drives poorly, and I'm happy to say that it does not. Now, can I sit here and say that Wrenchport drives so head and shoulders better than anything you've ever tried that you're never going to want to drive another sim in the future? No. But also, can I sit here and say I was underwhelmed and disappointed in how it drove? Absolutely not. In fact, I really enjoyed it. And there are items you could nitpick for sure. It seems like the cars were too active in the mid corner and the curb effects were really, really strong. If you hit a curb under braking, it pulls the car to the side. But those are things you would think would be ironed out uh, by the time the game comes to release. Now the word I keep seeing uh, from people who are in attendance and have been tweeting about their own experience is the game holds promise and I totally agree. It seems like they're working from a good foundation. Uh, everything we've seen so far, again, not perfect, but it seems like the base is there for them to build an excellent sim racing title and I actually really enjoyed the feel of it. And there's two primary reasons why I think that. First, and I'll talk more about this later, uh, the more I drove it, the more I enjoyed it. If you think back to your first time driving Project Cars 2 or NASCAR Ignition, uh, there was a feeling of like, okay, this is weird. Maybe I can adapt my driving style to it. It doesn't feel right, but I'll work with it. But I didn't have that feeling with Wrenchport. It felt like I was connected to it. Uh, felt sort of akin to ACC, maybe a little race room mixed in, but all in attendance felt quite connected to the driving very quickly. And of course, the more you drive it, the more you feel connected and learn the nuances and start to make those small changes that help you perform well in the sim. Again, I'm not making the case that this is a perfect title. There are things you have to work around at the stage, but all in all, it felt really good. And the second point on the driving front is that the esports pros, who are really the ones you should be listening to when it comes to the quality of the driving, couldn't stay away from it. So us content creators on Saturday night, we sat up, we had this amazing evening, we were out eating barbecue, we had the Nürburgring 24 on the screens, we were sitting there having more than a few beers, and uh, you know, David Perel was at our table and he was telling us stories about Le Mans, just this amazing evening uh, with a lot of new friends I would consider, and uh, all the while we were doing this, the esports pros were inside putting in so many laps. There was literally lineups to get onto the racing rigs, and that of course speaks volumes. These are people who, if they weren't feeling the sim for whatever reason, they would simply walk away. But they didn't. They kept going back for more and more, and the amount of hours they put into this title was incredible, and I think that speaks volumes. 
So as I mentioned earlier, leading up to the weekend, there was some apprehension among us content creators who were sort of messaging and arranging how we'd meet up at the event. Uh, there was apprehension that we were going to be walking into a half-baked game that was just really a platform to promote some style of NFTs, but thankfully that was not the case. And it was one of the first things the CEO clarified when we sat down for the introductory speeches on day one. And later in the weekend, it was made more clear that there would be opportunities for people to sell unique content within Rensport. Now, that again sort of alludes back to NFTs, but the CEO did make it clear that this is not an NFT-based game. So it's possible that this unique content could be cars that your favorite mod creator creates and releases into the game, somehow bespoke exactly for you, or at least with a unique serial number or something like that. Uh, I don't know definitively at this point, but it's pretty clear that this is not going to be some promotional tool for glorified clip art. So most of my time in Munich was spent with Steve and Bram from Race Department, Erwin Hamidovic, Emily Jones, Chris Hay, Gamer Muscle. There was a few of us who sort of congregated together and we had some great talks just about stuff in the industry, you know, the struggles and, and rewards of YouTube and things like that. And it was really cool and I just can't thank those folks enough for making it a great trip. It's hard being away from the family, uh, but I really felt like I was meeting with old friends rather than, uh, you know, industry acquaintances. So I can't thank those people enough and something that came up in off the record talks was that each of us just wanted more time with the title and so the way this worked was initially we got in there and there was the hot lap event and then there was a race and uh, content creators of course were not hyper focused esports pros like most of the attendees were so most of us got knocked out early uh, with the exception of Emily Jones who absolutely crushed it and made it into the finals so shout out to Emily on that uh, but most of us got kicked out early and we went Went upstairs there's an upstairs area for content creators to record and with that came a cameraman and lights and things like that because they wanted to give us the opportunity to produce content but at the same time there was a desire from each of us to just have free time with the title and eventually we got that into Saturday night and Sunday morning we got time with the title to just drive around and experiment and have fun and it was really great and that was cool and I think it speaks lots that each of us wanted this it wasn't like we were saying oh no how are we going to shape this into usable content or anything like that each of us really wanted to spend more time with the title and of course I encourage you to check out each of their channels to see their respective takes on what they experience but again just the fact that each of us wanted to spend more time says a lot and obviously what you're seeing in this video and each of their respective videos or articles is going to be polished and written uh, but it was really cool to sit down with them after and just have an off the record chat and just say what we generally thought and you'll get their feelings from their respective channels or platforms uh, but generally speaking each of us wanted to spend more time with it and we enjoyed the time in it. All right, so I promised you a bonus point, so here goes. Something that occurred to many of us in attendance is that this event probably will move the needle and set a new standard for what a sim racing launch might look like. So bringing in 100 personalities from the world of sim racing this early in development is something that I don't think has happened before in the world of sim racing. So will Kunos have to follow suit for the launch of Assetto Corsa 2 or will Motorsport Games have to follow suit for the launch of the IndyCar game? And I'm not saying that everything has to be this magnitude, but handing out a few steam keys to a select few people might feel a little underwhelming following this event. And I'm not talking about inviting people like me halfway around the world to try out the title. I'm talking about inviting esports pros to torture test the sim this early in development to see if they're on the right track. Maybe this is a new standard. Maybe getting feedback from esports pros this early in development will help them make better titles. Who really knows, but I'm sure this transparency can only be good for future racing sims. So in conclusion, I'm unbelievably fortunate to have been part of this event and I can't thank the folks at Wrenchport for inviting me enough. This was a truly unforgettable weekend. The opportunity to shake hands with and meet and spend time with some of my favorite personalities from YouTube and uh, share a virtual track with the likes of Enzo Bonito and Mitchy Hoyer and Frederick Rasmussen. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime thing.
And more importantly, the fact that these folks were there to offer feedback and give honest criticism to a title this early in development really just blows my mind. I mean, this was just an incredible event and a huge new level of transparency for sim racing development, especially when the key takeaway was that the game stands up nicely. I don't think anyone in attendance would claim the game is perfect. There were bugs, but at the same time, it did stand up nicely to a torture test of, you know, a, a live multiplayer racing event and also a live uh, hot lap contest it stood up really nice and it seems like the foundation is in place to build a truly contending sim racing title and lastly i just want to thank you for being here for me through all these years the support and the positivity and the likes and the comments and the shares it really just means everything and it's somehow sim racing 604 uh, has made it into the minds of developers and i get to be part of events like this and it's really something uh, that will stick with me for the rest of my life so i can't can't thank you enough for your support of this channel it's absolutely incredible and like I say I'm incredibly fortunate to have been part of this so thank you guys for watching and there will be of course lots more from Rengeport we're not expected to get this in public hands for the next 18 months uh, but it seems like they're establishing sort of a closed beta group for Rengeport so there will be a lot more on this channel and on the channels of my new friends so thank you all and we will see you next time